If you had to, how would you condense the Bible into one verse? Or how would you summarise the Christian message? Let's explore these questions in our Lolly Sermon today. There was a couple who were quite well off financially. The husband was a very successful businessman and though they had plenty of money, they didn't parade it around. Uh, they were still very down to earth and, and quite um, wise and frugal with their money. However, the man had always wanted one thing and, and know that when the kids had grown up and moved out, he decided that he would uh, buy it, a Porsche 911 convertible. He treated it like his baby. He spent many Saturdays washing it and polishing it. He never let anyone drive it and he really looked after it. One day, his wife asked him if she could take it out for a drive while he was uh, doing some work at home. He very nervously agreed and begged her to be very, very careful with it. So she backed it out of the driveway and let the top down and soon she was driving along with the wind in her hair, enjoying the beautiful day. She was cruising along when all of a sudden a young boy on a bike uh, veered out into her path. She swerved to miss him and ran right into the side of a parked car. The airbag exploded, the front of the car crumpled and glass flew everywhere. A man came running up to her and said, ma'am, are you okay? He helped her out of the car and, and put her on the side of the curb. And she said, I'm fine. I just need to gather my thoughts. And her only thought at that time was, I'm a dead woman. When Jim, her husband, finds out what I've done to his car, he is gonna kill me. As she waited for the police to arrive, all she could think about was how excited her husband was when he bought this car. He had wanted one for a long time, since they were an uh, early married couple. And though he was a good husband, she dreaded the hurt and the anguish on his face when he would hear the news about his car. And about that time, the police arrived uh, and, and said to the, uh, the lady, ma'am, may I see your driver's license and do you have insurance? She walked over to the car to get her pur purse out of the uh, glove box, grabbed the insurance paperwork and gave it, came back and gave it to the officer, her license. And when she opened up the plastic package where the papers were, to her surprise, there on top of the papers was an envelope with her name on it. She opened it up and this is what uh, she read. Dear Beth, if you are reading this, then you have probably been in an accident and wrecked the car. Don't worry. My only concern is that you are all right, because just remember it is you that I love. Today we focus at one of the core truths of the Christian faith, God's amazing love for all of creation. In our John 3 reading, we receive a love letter from God to us, telling us and showing us exactly how much God loves us. If we wanted to condense the Bible into one verse, I think it would be John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This brief passage so concisely outlines God's relationship with the world. That's why the great reformer Martin Luther called this verse the gospel in miniature or the gospel within the gospels. In our lolly service today, I wanna to share the gospel message using Smarties. And for those watching online, you have two choices. You can press pause and head to the shops now and buy some Smarties and come back. Or you can just continue now and just imagine eating specific Smarties at different times throughout the sermon. But before we get into the uh, Smarties, let's set the scene of our John 3 passage today. At the start of John chapter 3, it's the beginning, very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. And we listen in on a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus in the secret and at night. 
Nicodemus was a very respected, very powerful member of the Jewish religious authorities. Nicodemus comes to Jesus, convinced that Jesus is from God because all, of all the amazing things that he had witnessed Jesus doing. But Nicodemus is believing that Jesus is some sort of prophet, a, a powerful messenger from God. Interestingly, the Greek word that John uses here for love points to the kind of love that loves another with no thought of return or reward. That is God's kind of love for us. God does not love us because we deserve to be loved or because God needs a reward for loving us. God just loves us. That is all. Loves you, loves me. No matter who you are, God loves you. God created us, created us all and God loves us all. So grab your green smarty and eat it. And as you do, remember and thank God for all of creation, for creating not only the earth and the universe, for all the living creatures in the sky, this land and the sea, but also give thanks for creating us and all of humanity. Each and every person is created by God, is loved by God. And so as we share the green smarty, it reminds us of God's creation. So John 3, 16 reminds us that God loves us, but then we humans start messing around with it. We complicate things. We argue theological concepts and perspectives. Religious politics becomes the focus of our faith and our service. And we fo focus on what divides us rather than what unites us. We create divisions and then create denominations. However, after all is said and done, there is still a simple and unshakable truth of the gospel. God loves us. Beyond all of our reasons, rationales, logic, beyond all proof and evidence, beyond anything that we uh, expect, on the other side of the complex world of the Christian faith that we have created is a childlike simplicity. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. So would you please now grab your brown smarty and eat it. The brown smarty reminds us of our sin, our wrongs, where we get in the way of God's message of love through our attitudes, our words and our actions to others. And so as we pause to eat our brown smarty, I invite us to confess and to surrender to God those thoughts, those words or those behaviours where we have not shown God's love to others. We know John 3.16 well, but what about John 3.17? We often don't hear the verse in the context of the whole passage. Someone once said that it is often the greatest story half told. John 3:17 says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the good news. This is the great news. What John captures is that God has shown us in clear and simple terms of God's love for us all. Not only does God speak of love for all humanity, but backs it up with action. We are forgiven because of Jesus Christ, taking our place on the cross, paying our debt, sacrificing himself on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. God did not come into the world to condemn us, to leave us in our sin or to punish us for our wrongs. God loves us, came to save us, to forgive us and to offer us life with God forever. John expands on what he said in, the gospel, in his gospel by writing these words later in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. God showed his love for us when he sent his only son into the world to give us life. Real love isn't our love for God, but his love for us. God sent his son to be the sacrifice by which our sins are forgiven. How would you respond if someone asked you, what is the most important word in the New Testament? What word would you say? I would think of words like Jesus or love or grace. A famous theologian, Karl Barth, 
said the most important word in the New Testament is hoopa. Hoopa is a Greek word meaning on behalf of or in place of. But here is referring to the truth that God showed love to all the world by taking our place. On behalf, Jesus paid the price so that we might have life. On our behalf. So please grab your red or your pink smarty. And as you enjoy this smarty, give thanks to God for sending Jesus into the world, not to condemn us, not to punish us, not to hold us in our sin, but to save us, to redeem us, to show God's love and God's grace through Jesus' life, death and resurrection. May we always remember this smarty. May we always remember the red or pink smarty being one of God's love, God's amazing and God's unconditional love for us all. In May, the Christian church worldwide celebrated the day of Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit given to us, God letting us know that God is with us, a helper with us all the time, no matter what we are going through, God's spirit that can live with us, just another example of God's amazing love for us. So I want to invite you to grab your yellow smarty and as you eat this smarty, invite God's spirit into your heart and your mind, into your life, into whatever is going on in your life. Invite God's spirit to help, to guide, to protect, to strengthen, to equip you on your journey. Enjoy the yellow smarty and the gift of God's spirit with us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Whoever believes in God will have eternal life. As we come towards the final smarty, I wanna come back to something that Nicodemus could not understand, could not get past. How can someone be born again? Jesus tells Nicodemus, and Jesus tells us that we receive a new kind of life, eternal life, life with God forever. Those who believe in the living God, those who follow the resurrected Jesus, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and eternal life. That is how we are born again. It makes no difference what our lives have been like before. It may be that we feel like we have been the biggest failure made too many mistakes or some massive mistakes. It may, makes no difference whatsoever. That is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can make a new beginning in God's kingdom. So find your blue or your purple smarty, blue or purple, and relish this smarty. Thank God for the promise, the assurance that if we believe in God, Salvation is ours. We receive life in the presence of God forever. So let's enjoy the blue or the purple smarty as we remember God's promise of eternal life. On Thursday, I caught up with two of the Uniting Care Foster and Kingship Care team leaders who operate out of this Redcliffe site. They lead a team of staff and carers who are inspiring in their love, their compassion and their sacrifice for children uh, that are in need. This reminded me of a story about a woman named Renee who adopted a little girl from the foster care uh, program in her city. Three years later, a caseworker called up and said that she had another child that Renee might like to consider uh, taking on. He was just a toddler, but he had already suffered a great deal within his short life. This little boy had bounced from home to home. His rage and his behaviour were too much for many other families just to handle. But this caseworker believed that Renee had the love and the strength to help this scared little boy. Renee said that when he misbehaved, I just told him that I loved him. I just told him over and over, I love you. 
Renee said that it took many years before the boy's rage subsided. And some years later, he was in the middle of playing on the floor when he looked up at Renee and said, you bought me home, mum. I love you too. It didn't matter to Renee how long it took. Her goal was to continue to speak love and to continue to show love to him. She was determined to love, even if he could not love her back. It doesn't say in the scriptures, for God so loved the good people only. No limitations, no exclusions, no maybes, no fine print. God loved us first and God loves us unconditionally. That is the only thing that we need to remember. So let's hear this gospel within the gospels again. Let it soak into our spirits and may it be evident in our lives through our thoughts, our words and our actions. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. Let's pray. Lord God, we wanna thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you for creating all that we see, all that we know and all that we are. Lord, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, for his life, his death on the cross on our behalf. We thank you for the resurrection and the victory over death. We thank you that you have paid the price once and for all that we can be made right with you. And we thank you for your promise of the spirit to be with us. And we thank you for the promise of eternal life in your presence. Lord, we thank you so much for your love, for your amazing love, for your unconditional love that you give to each and every one of us. So Lord, no matter who we are, no matter what age, no matter what we've done in the past, Lord, we thank you that you love us, that you have paid the price for our forgiveness, that we are made new in your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to know that love and to share that love. Like we share lollies with each other, help us to share your gospel, your love, your message of hope and grace to other people who need it so much. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.